at some point, um, any day now, we're supposed to be getting a new Toxic Avenger movie. I, I know it's real. My wife worked on it. It's said to be complete, and I guess it's releasing at some point here, even if we don't have a trailer or anything, but I figured, what better time to bust out a trauma-themed dead last, focusing on the Lloyd Kaufman-directed entries, which include these 10 movies, starting with their first big horror hit going all the way up to the more recent entries. Now, there's not enough space to include everything, but we settled on these, and I sent this list to my patrons, and they all ranked them with their favorite at number one, worth one point, second favorite at number two, worth two points, all the way down to their least favorite at dead last, here worth ten points. These patrons answered the call with 17 total rankings, meaning the absolute best score a movie can have is 17 points, if everyone ranked it at number one, and 170 points as the worst, meaning everyone ranked it dead last. And here with me today is a man that you know and love, one of the hardest working men in the industry, currently working on things I imagine we can't talk about due to NDAs, but probably rhymes with car doors. Um, welcome back, Matt. Hey, uh, actually, Josh, my name is uh, Henry Swanson. <laughs> uh, Henry Swanson is the name, and excitement's my game. Well, this should this should be pretty exciting. We're talking about some classic trash cinema here. I love talking about trauma, so this should be interesting. So you've been busting your butt down there, pulling some late hours at the shop? Yeah, I'm, I don't know what not being tired is like. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to know. But I, as you can see, I, I haven't gone crazy or anything. Well, I don't know. Uh, some of your rankings might put that into question. And you and I had some similarities in our rankings, but also some big disparities. So let's get right to it and kick it off with our dead last movie coming in at 138 points. And it's the zombie chicken musical Poultry Geist. It was ranked a dead last nine times, so a little more than half the time. And the best score that it got was a third place nod. One of those dead last hits came from me, though, because I gave it my 10th place spot. Because this is the only movie on this list that just does not click in any way for me. I, I kind of love horror musicals, so I had high hopes when it came out, but everything fell flat for me. And, and here's the deal. When it comes to a musical, I want to be singing those songs for a day afterwards with, with like, Mean Green Mother or, or something even more recent like Anna and the Apocalypse. I found myself humming those tunes after watching, but here I am just a few days after watching this one and I can't even remember any of the songs. Plus, Troma's always had this we make fun of everyone kind of attitude and it works because it's clearly done satirically, but here it just felt more like straight up ridicule and considering their movies generally feature bad guy bullies i feel like trauma's sort of being the bully with this one but matt you actually don't share that opinion because you've got it in sixth which is higher higher than most yeah absolutely you know i never seen the movie before so i was going in blind and yeah it's listen it's not good no no trauma movie is intending to be good but this one had some really good jokes, really good jokes that I laughed out loud a bunch of times, uh, especially when the kid was like, you just made me blow my only chance at earning enough money to one day start my own franchise. Diddy's. I, lo I love that joke. <laughs> I think that's a great joke. And I, I don't know, just a lot of the musical numbers. I thought it was really ambitious for Lloyd. You know, he stepped out, he tried to do like a weird, wacky musical. I thought some of the effects were fun. And really, a lot of the jokes landed, like when he's doing his Jaws scene and everyone's eating crackers. Like, no one ever mentions that Quint's, like, you know, constantly nibbling on crackers when he's in that movie. And they did that, and they paid, like, homage to that, and I was just all about it. I don't know. I, I liked Poultry Geist, I guess, a lot more than a lot of people would. On that note, we'll jump down to our number nine movie, which was a pretty fair drop down in points coming in with 121, and it's the Toxic Avenger 3, which was ranked dead last twice, and the best score that it got was fourth place, which it also got twice. 
Now on this particular one, we did not differ greatly since we both had it where it landed. We both had it in ninth and I had it in there mainly because here, here's the thing. If you, if you don't know this, originally Toxie 2 and 3 were one movie, but it was just too long and rather than chop it down they split it into two separate movies which is why some things between the two just don't make sense and and some things repeat and, and, and whatever but the, but the problem seems to be that they took all the fun weird stuff and jammed it into part two and part three just had all the core plot stuff and even though the second movie feels incomprehensible and this feels more like a regular movie with a beginning middle and end it's just way less entertaining plus look if you're not gonna get mark torgel back to play melvin are you really going to just replace him with this guy you, you get someone that doesn't look anything like Melvin and then have to give him this fake haircut, fake teeth, and fake acne. It just didn't work. And, and knowing that they actually had a chance to get Torgal back but weren't willing to pay him like the, like the 50 extra bucks that he asked for just makes it even worse. So you had this in ninth as well, so also not a lot of love for Toxie 3. No. It's not a very good movie. And it, I think that Lloyd should have just bit the bullet and just made one film. He could have just easily have cut out a ton of stuff from both Toxic Avenger 2 and Toxic Avenger 3 and made just one Toxic Avenger sequel. Would it have been great? No. But we weren't expecting high art anyway. Um, I'm with you on hating the, the Melvin uh, kid that they choose with the mm. buck teeth. And it's just, it's awful. And I can't even, it, it's just so bad that it hurts to watch. So that does definitely drop it a couple notches for me also. I just think that for a Toxic Avenger movie, it was supposed to be so wacky and so just out there. This one's just boring. It's just flat out kind of dull. Even the ending, the way they wrap it up is just so like, oh, God saved them. God saving the toxic, toxic Avenger. Okay, I, I, I guess that's. I guess I didn't see that coming, but you know, it just doesn't. It doesn't fit with trauma. Yeah. I just think they could have done better. It may not be a lot better, but it's one better since in eighth place we have our next entry, which was a surprising one to me because I thought this was more beloved as a part of their catalog, and at one hundred and eleven points, it's terror firmer. This was also ranked dead last twice, but did get one second place hit. And this is another one that you and I were really split on because I gave this a pretty high score. I had this one in third because when this came out, I was a pretty big fan already. And I had read Lloyd's book, All I Need to Know About Filmmaking. I learned from the Toxic Avenger. And that told a bunch of stories from behind the scenes and some of the crazy stuff that happened on the sets. And this movie felt like some sort of film version of that book. And, and, and let me tell you, I'm kind of a sucker for films that take place on movie sets. There's that sort of meta element and you get this whole vibe of not knowing what's the movie's story and what the movie's movie story. Uh, plus, this is hard to really quantify, but this is the sort of crass and offensive stuff I want to see without having to play the edgelord card. I mean, the, the butts of the jokes are like frat boy jerks, creepy molesters, um, ventriloquists uh, with the with the exception of the old killer hermaphrodite trope most of the humor feels like it's punching up or at least sideways and honestly it mostly feels like it's trauma making fun of itself and and i i just i just kind of love it matt you do not feel the same though since you have this squarely in dead last honestly i i'd seen it twice and I, I didn't like it the first time and I didn't like it the second time. And I think this time, definitely, I was suffering from trauma fatigue, which is very real. Because when you have to watch 10 trauma movies, it's, it can be a chore. So going into this one, I'm just like, oh, this is just so gross. And there's some really funny jokes in it and all that. But at the same time, the, you know the killer 
at the beginning of the movie, practically. I mean, there's no surprises there. It's not like I was expecting a great whodunit, but at the same time, give me a little something more than that. But at the same time, it was just too much. I'm like, okay, guys, you can tone it down a little bit. You don't have to, to go that far into the gross out stuff. Can you can you give me a little bit of a story? It just I, I know it was based on his book or, you know, so he says, but I read that book and, and the book's great and Terra Firma, the movie, I, I don't think is excellent at all. I, I just think it's a chore to sit through and too gross and you're not going to put it on and watch it with anybody. I'm sorry, unless they're, you know, sick in the head like, like you. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll drop us down to our number seven. And here's another one that I was surprised was a little lower because it's another one that I thought people enjoyed more. And with 107 points, it's Citizen Toxie, the Toxic Avenger 4. This was ranked dead last one time, and its highest score was second place, which it got twice. We weren't split at all on this one because we gave it the same score, and that's right where it landed in seventh place. And, and I gave this seventh, but I'm really torn on it because here's the thing. I really like this one. It, it has more of what I want from a Toxic Avenger sequel, but at the same time, it's missing a little something. And the odd thing is that I can't quite place what it is. I, I think it's mostly a question of tone, since at this point, they're really trying hard to push the boundaries and embrace the bad taste elements of their reputation. So you get things like the goofy school for the mentally handicapped in the beginning, which just isn't as funny as they seem to think it is. But then there's some actual fun stuff like the alternate universe and the bootleg superheroes that Tromaville has. And ultimately, I just wish that they had focused more on the humor that stemmed from the scenarios that they developed than just falling onto the dumb, ha ha, are people funny when they're wearing diapers? Ha. And plus, uh, they do Sergeant Kabuki Man kind of dirty. So I have to say, I was surprised when you had this at seven because you have a sort of special connection to this one, don't you? Yeah, I do. Um, I was working at my dad's uh, yeah, business uh, when I was probably, I don't know, 20 or something like that. But um, he knew I didn't want to be there. So I called Troma and they were shoot they were doing reshoots on the Toxic Avenger 4. And they're like, well, listen, you're going to have to come out to New York City. We can't pay you, but you, you'll get to, you know, squash heads. We need some fake boobs ripped off. We need some fake uh, uh, jizz. We can't pay you for supplies. Okay, we'll pay you in videotapes and T-shirts is what I think I got. <laughs> but my dad was so cool. He's like, listen, I'll get us a hotel. We'll go out to New York City together and we'll see what, what what's up. So I spent the whole day with my dad in New York shooting Toxic Avenger 4. And since my dad had the same build as Toxie and Noxie, they used him as a stand-in to like rip people apart or just his hands and his arms, like ripping the breasts off and testicles. That was all us. And my dad's even in a scene juggling a head with like another doctor. And he loved that. Um, but even better, like, because this was a, such a family effort, my mom helped me help me make in her kitchen. I'll never forget this because my mom's like a Disney woman. She hates all this stuff. <laughs> so I'm in a kitchen with my mom making like fake semen for the lesbians getting sprayed. Which, <laughs> <laughs> this is such a great scene. It's a special place in my heart. I just don't think the movie's that good. I mean, I love the first Toxic Avenger. There's no romance. There's no there's no good dialogue. It's all just sight gags and Kabuki Man's a drunk for some reason. And <laughs> I guess the only good thing I can say is that my dad and Lemmy are in a movie together with Hank the Angry Dwarf. I mean, that's cool. It just seems like it's not, there's not much love there, especially when they're like, oh yeah, and this is the uh, real sequel to it. I, I like Toxic Avenger 2 better than this. So Now we move on to our number six entry, which came in only two points lower than Toxie 4. And it 105 points, and hey, uh, speaking of Toxie 2, it's the Toxic Avenger Part 2. The lowest score it got was ninth place, which it got three times, but it's the first film on this list to not get a dead last ranking, and it got one first place ranking, making it also the first on this list to do so. I gave this one a bit of a lower spot since I had it an eighth, and yeah, I, I said I was torn with Citizen Toxie, and that goes double here. 
Uh, like I said when I talked about part three, there's just something off here considering that this was just portions of a full movie and it really shows. And there's just no real plot here and it just feels more like a series of drawn out set pieces that don't really add up to anything. But the good thing there is that those set pieces are all pretty fun to watch and are still a good time. The whole like 20 minute fight outside the Center for the Blind is just ridiculous, but I was amused the entire time. And now the thing is, I wanted to rank this one higher because there's a lot going for it, but there's two things that hold it back. The first is Claire, just Claire in general. The character doesn't work. The actress doesn't work and she brings the whole thing down. But more importantly, it's Toxie's voice. After the deep baritone of the first film, he now has this sort of teenage whiny voice and I hate it. The, and to make it worse, they do this non-stop voiceover narration on about 70% of the movie because they have to in order to have it make sense considering they had to chop so much out to extend it to two movies. You had this a bit higher than me though since you had it in fifth. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. I really do. I can't stand uh, Claire. Uh, just going from Sarah in the first movie, who's such a sweet character, and she's not a bimbo, and she's not stupid. She's just this really nice blind lady that fell in love with this creature, which is awesome. Uh, instead, now they're going for more of a cartoony kind of vibe, which, you know, Lloyd even admits on some occasions that he should have been making some children's films. I think that's why they did Toxic Crusaders, because a lot of Toxic Avenger 2 would work as a kid's movie. A lot of the stuff is really funny and it's not gross and it's not, you know, ultra violent. It's just goofy. You know what I mean? But at the same time, um, I don't know that I just have a soft spot for this because I think it's just kind of a sweet movie. And I love when he goes to Japan, probably the best scenes in the movie are when he goes to Japan. Uh, and you know, it's kind of like a time capsule of that era. Mm. And I don't know. I, I get a much more of a kick out of it. I enjoyed watching it a lot more than a lot of other movies on this list. Going into the top half of our list, our number five movie is the first one under 100 points, and with a score of 94, we've got probably the most entertaining title, Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD, which also never got a dead last, but it did get ninth place twice, and also got one first place. So again, a pretty big range of opinions on this one. I have this in fifth place, and this is probably the most confused trauma movie on this list because it just has no idea what it wants to be. It's like this almost earnest superhero tale with a bit more of a comedic bent, and it's almost family friendly, but then suddenly uh, you have a woman being raped in the park. It, it seems like according to Lloyd's book that there was a lot of pressure behind the scenes to kind of streamline this and make it more of a marketable thing instead of a typical trauma movie. And he sort of kind of listened. And I almost wished that he had gone one way or the other, either just ignored all that and made this more over the top like the other trauma films of the era, or actually did listen and just made a simpler accessible film. One thing that must be acknowledged though is that this is the film from which the now iconic car flip originated. It was shot for a sequence in this one and it's a pretty impressive stunt and I guess impressive enough for them to reuse like eight times now. Um, oh, and I do wanna point out one weird scene uh, where you have a prostitute getting shaken down by her pimp and I guess she's not as forthcoming as he would like. So he hits her and starts to drag her off somewhere for uh, who knows what. So she pulls a knife because this man attacked her and has whatever planned. So she's clearly defending herself and Kabuki Man stumbles across this and cuts both of them into sushi. Like what was her crime? Being a prostitute? Not giving her pimp enough money? Trying to ensure that she's not beaten and possibly assaulted? Not cool, Kabuk. Matt, your opinion was pretty similar since you had it in fourth. Look, man, I'm gonna bump it up a point just for the theme song alone. Another <laughs> excellent song that is just so a, a product of its time. And I just love this movie. I think it's it's funny. And, you know, Lloyd, again, in his book was like, man, I really messed up. This would be a perfect kids. The kids love this guy. It's a perfect kids movie. 
but then he's got people getting cut up with swords and he's you know got got sex scenes and stuff i'm like lloyd what are you doing because this character does not <laughs> the tone of this movie is so all over the place yeah it's ridiculously uneven and in, in terms of tone but man is it fun it, and some of the lines that the main actor what's his name i can't i do not know yeah, the main actor that plays Kabuki Man, and, and I had his name written down, and I, I forgot it, was, I think he's perfect in this. And if you were to do a sequel, I think you'd have to get him back because his comic timing is really good. And I, and I love the girl that's with him, too. I think they're both great lead characters. I don't know. I have fun with this every time I watch it. It's just a silly, lighthearted, fun movie with a lot of good comedy and, and, and weird special effects. And I don't know, just great theme song. I mean, put it on. <laughs> So that'll drop us down to number four with 84 points. And here's one that I have to tell you that I did not expect to be this high up. And it's Troma's War. This did get ranked dead last one time, but was also ranked first one time. I had this one in sixth, and yeah, I'm shocked that it placed fourth. Not because it's bad, but just because it's probably the least known on this grouping, but this movie's just silly. I, I think that it's possible that since it's basically the least horror related here, and I have to say, uh, it's a lot of fun. I've always kind of liked this one, and me placing it in sixth isn't because I don't like it, but because there's just other ones that I like more. The, the downside with this one is that it just goes on for a bit too long, and the middle of the movie just doesn't have a whole lot going on, and starts to feel a bit repetitious. Outside of that though, there's just this general insanity that keeps it going, and even though there's not exactly what I would call deep characters, they're at least distinctive. With a cast of about 15 people or so that you're following, it actually does a good job of making each one their own thing, and they're easy to tell apart, and you know who everyone is, and that's not exactly the easiest thing to do. This is also the movie that Lloyd discovered Joe Fleischaker, the, the rather large gentleman that would go on to become a regular fixture in pretty much every trauma flick after this. And apparently the other cast members were upset that Lloyd kept focusing so much screen on this one guy who was just meant to be an extra. Matt, you like this one quite a bit as well, and you actually have it in your top three since you have it in third place. Oh yeah, uh, I'm a huge fan of really bad actors dying on film <laughs> and this movie has one every five minutes like someone getting shot like, oh 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 and they're like tumbling over barrels the whole movie's that and it's so much fun to watch because it's like okay if you were playing army or war in the backyard with your buddies but you had a budget like a slim budget they gave you real guns that's what it feels like to me it feels like a bunch of bunch of actors just playing war in a backyard and it's so entertaining and it's so much fun and it doesn't matter about the story i couldn't tell you what they were fighting for <laughs> i was just along for the ride enjoying every goofy minute of it uh the guy with the pig knows why i mean <laughs> is it necessary no did it ever come up <laughs> like, was there ever a specific reason no but that's the beauty of it that movie's so random it's like throw something at a dartboard see what sticks but I mean, I I would watch that again. And this is the first time I had to watch it for this this uh, this show. The first time I, I've seen it. And uh, it's definitely one of my favorite trauma movies now. It's just such a blast. I agree, Josh. It's a lot of fun. All right, time for the top three as we head to number three. And here's another one that you and I were pretty split on. And opinions were, were pretty split as well. And with 80 points, it's Tromeo and Juliet. This actually did get dead last one time but it was also ranked in first place twice. I had this one pretty high up as well because this was my second place spot, and damn, do I love this film. It, it was sort of a tipping point for Troma, I think, uh, after the Toxie sequels and Kabuki Man and then the Nukem High sequels that Lloyd didn't direct. It seemed like they were kind of stuck in this sort of weird, we're making kids movies with violence and sex in them kind of mentality. Uh, like I said with Kabuki Man, there seemed like a real push to either go more mainstream or just push the envelope further, and Tromeo and Juliet was a clear indication that they were choosing the latter. 
But the thing is that it's all done in such a clever way and has a dark satirical wit to it that I just love. It, it's, it's pretty known that this was the kickstart for James Gunn's career, and you can already feel his sense of humor starting to show through. And also, I want to say that Valentine Miel, who plays Murray in the film, gives a performance that I think really stands out. He has this crazy energy in his scenes, but then actually gives a pretty solidly sad death scene. I looked at his IMDb and he's not in a ton of other things and mainly just shows up in James Gunn stuff, but man, that does he stand out. But he's not the only one because I like a bunch of the actors here. Jane Jensen is a great lead as Juliet. Will Keenan nails it. William Beckwith is a fantastic villain and, and even baby Sean Gunn is pretty fun. And yeah, I, I, I just love this one. You, however, did not share that love because you've got it all the way down in eighth place. It's probably the most competent film Troma's ever done. It borders on actually being a, a good movie. Like, I mean, <laughs> it's always got those trauma elements. Of course, they're playing a lot with the dialogue, you know, oh, to be a glove on that uh, hand so I could touch that cheek and she's grabbing her ass, you know, stuff like that I love. I love, give me that, give me that all day. Uh, it's just, and I think the actors are pretty good too, especially her. She's great in it. And mm -hmm. It's just, you know, for me, it's, I like early trauma a lot i love the early trauma movies more so than the modern ones and tromeo and juliet does fall into that category great soundtrack it's just for me it just kind of slow at points and a lot of the jokes don't land um and yeah i've always just been a, a fan of more of the guerrilla style filmmaking although i do think this is definitely lloyd's best attempt at being a real you know director in, in terms of like having some really cool shots and setups and and the way the actors were, were portraying their characters, they were all really good, honestly. Um, it's not that I don't like it. I, I, I like it just fine. It's just I had to put it somewhere on this list, and there's some excellent movies that I think Jerome has done that, that belong in the top three, and this just wasn't one of them. Okay, not many movies left, and coming in at number two here, with a mere 62 points, is the classic Class of Nukem High. And if you're wondering what's going on, at Newcomb High, well, what's going on is that it ranked dead last one time, but was ranked number one twice, and had a lot of higher scores that throughout, like lots of twos and threes. I myself had it as number four, and I hate not having this in my top three because I love this film so much. It's just so insane and weird and all over the place, but in a, in a good way. There's, there's just this odd infectious nature to it that I really like and it, it really should not work it's so fractured like you have this story of the toxic waste plant leaking into the school you have the Cretans. you've got the toxic weed our hero for some reason becomes a sort of a toxic Avenger bootleg there's a monster subplot a laser it's just a lot but it all fits and it does come together um, somehow. And, and like I said with Troma's War, there's just this wild collection of odd characters that's fun to see. Each of the Cretans has a thing going on, and it's pretty absurd. The main teens are given enough personality to get behind them, and even the side characters like Pat Ryan as the nuclear plant owner are fun additions. And then there's that theme song, because I guess all of the early Troma movies had to, had to have those super catchy theme songs, and this one gets stuck in my head forever after I watch it. Matt, you also have some love for this one since you have it in second. Oh, yeah. You know, you know what trauma really does good is bullies and cretins. And this, this has the best group. I swear, I love this movie. I could just watch a story about them. Because we're the, the honor students. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I don't know what happened to these guys. <laughs> and it's just so much fun. Like, I don't know. They're so zany and wacky. And the monster at the end of this movie is so damn cool. It's oh, yeah. way cooler than anything Trump has ever done. Like, even the Toxic Avenger. Like, this, this monster is awesome. It could be in a, a big budget 80s horror film. I mean, what's there not to like? This is trauma. If you really had to, I don't know. I had to put it somewhere. I, I was honestly debating putting it first too, 
because I think this movie represents trauma, maybe even a little more than the Toxic Avenger does, because mm -hmm. it is, it's just so insane and nutty. And, and I mean, honestly, you could never make this movie today. So much violence in schools. I'm like, this is yeah. really like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's no way trauma would be able to pull this off today. So watching this is a time capsule for sure, but it's, it's definitely a lot of fun. And, and I always got a kick out of it. Well, that only leaves one movie. And I think this one was never really in doubt for me. I think it was always a question of how big it would win it. And with a mere 32 points, of course, it's the original, the one and only The Toxic Avenger. It's the only movie on this list to not get either a dead last ranking or a ninth place ranking, and the lowest it got was fifth place, but it did get first place nine times. And there's an odd symmetry to the fact that our number one movie got first nine times and our number 10 movie got dead last nine times. And we were unified here since both of us gave this one first place. Oh yeah, I mean, listen, Bozo is probably one of the greatest characters in cinema history <laughs> okay i remember in college me and my buddies would walk around being like you watching me you watching me <laughs> like, remember when he's playing racquetball and he's like i'm gonna kill it i'm gonna kill it and he's like <laughs> i mean that, that is so funny like for a movie called the toxic avenger you don't expect anything but there's some really sweet stuff in this movie between him and and sarah and, and you fall in love with Sarah because she's such a sweetheart and, and she's not a bimbo like this Claire from Documentary 2. And just the world he creates, uh, the violence is definitely shocking at points, but hilarious in others. And I don't know, I just think it's, it's such a, a fun movie. Again, it's like I could watch this with a group of people and have an excellent time because it's just it's just silliness and it's gross and it's got everything comedy horror silliness but it's just fun it's just a it's a classic the thing with this one is that it's so perfectly walks the line much more than any of their other films this feels like a trauma movie. But then again, I think pretty much anybody can sit down and watch this movie, unlike something like Nukem High or Tromeo and Juliet, which maybe wander a little more into the weirdo territory where your average viewer might be like, what the hell am I watching here? This still feels like a legitimate movie with the weirdo stuff as well. It, it's a fine line, but it walks it. And, and again, I think that it nails the characters. Trauma works best when it gives us really hateable bad guys and pretty lovable good guys. They falter sometimes when they try to make their good guys overly dumb or naive, but they really hit it here. Melvin's not an idiot. He's actually a pretty competent superhero and boyfriend, and the awkwardness and humor come from people's reaction to him instead of him, like falling down or just being dumb, and yet there's still this element of satire and political commentary that underlies the film. Outside of the nuclear waste messaging, there's also criticism of fascist elements and authority and corruption because Lloyd always works with trying to put some sort of message in there, even if it's a little half-hearted at times. But all in all, this is still just such a fun film to watch, and even after almost 40 years, it still holds up as a violent and wild transgressive bit of cinema. <laughs> So there you have it, 10 trauma movies ranked. And let, let's take a look at our roster here. Let, let's see. Uh, looking at this, I'm not really upset about anything. I mean, personally, I, I think Terra Firmer could be a bit higher, but I guess that that's the one that splits people. But the thing about trauma, as we see from the fact that almost every movie on here got at least one dead last ranking, is that there's a variety of different opinions on each one. So I guess this is another one in which any order makes sense, really. Although I, I think that it'll always end up with Poltergeist as our dead last. Um, if you agree or disagree or have a different dead last pick, make sure to shout it out in the comments below. And please take one second to click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And I would like to thank my patrons, whether you sent in a ranking or not. You guys help keep this going. And you out there can be a part of that by going to patreon.com slash movie timelines. And you can contribute rankings every month for uh for for upcoming episodes and, and and i also want to make sure to thank my special guest matt thank you thank you for coming back and talking trauma with me 
Yeah, thanks. This is fun. And thanks to everybody out there that sat through 10 trauma movies <laughs> with me. At least I wasn't alone. You know, that was the one thing I was trying to watch these at work. I was telling Josh earlier, and I was constantly afraid of getting fired. Because I'm like, if anybody sees what I'm watching on my phone right now, they're going to call HR and that'll ruin my career. So, you know, if anything, I, I made it. Yes, you yes, you did. And, and, and thank you again. And, and thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you very shortly for another great video.